So in this first section, we take a look at the basic arithmetic, but um, it's not like as basic as you think. We're going to be trying to do stuff without actually having numbers. Um, so we have to uh, remember the rules and know how to manipulate them um, or know how to use them so that we can plug in numbers. So the first thing to talk about is what is a remainder? And it's the leftover after you divide. So if you take two numbers, two integers, and you divide them, and it does not go in evenly, then you get a remainder of some sort. Uh, the remainder can never be bigger than the divisor. It actually can never be equal to the divisor as well. Otherwise, it would divide in evenly. Uh, so, yeah, or you could get a remainder if you divide two polynomials. That's, that's something as well. So you can always get a remainder. It just might mean something different if you're using polynomials. But in this case, we're using integers. We're dividing integers. And remember, an integer is a number like uh, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or the negatives, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So we have a question here. If a divided by 5 has remainder 2, so whatever number this is, when you divide it by 5, you get a, a 2 remainder, then what is the remainder of a squared? The first step is to find, just to pick an a value, that gives you two when you, uh, sorry, that gives you a remainder of two. So we're looking at the remainder here, not the actual answer. So if I take five divided by five, if I do that, five divided by five, then I have one, five, subtract, and I get zero. The remainder is zero. That's that part. And if I use six, which is one more than five, uh, then I get a remainder of one. And you can do the same division. 5 equals on the side there. And, oh, no, no, not 5. Right? Uh, we're dividing 6 by 5. So 6 goes on the inside. Divide by 5. 5 times 1. Okay. Without going over, right? This is how you do long division. Uh, 1 times 5 is 5. And that gives you a remainder of 1 if I subtract. Yes. So remainder of 1. That's what I have here. And then uh, 7 has the remainder of 2. So you can do the same division over again. So that's the first step. Find an A value that satisfies the conditions that they give you. And those conditions are that you get a remainder of 2. So we found an A value. The A value is 7. That gives us remainder 2. Now all I need to do is find the remainder of A squared because that's what it's asking. Then what is the remainder of A squared when you divide it by 5? So we just take A, square it, you get 49, divide, and you get a remainder of 4. It's really, really simple. So really, there's two steps to this. It's just knowing uh, how to get remainders. Really, that's that's all it is. So if you see a question like this, it's, it's really simple. Uh, prime factors. Let's talk about the definition of a prime factor. A factor, like phi factor, no. A factor is just the numbers that you can multiply together to get to a next number. So um, like the factors of 15 are 3 and 5 and 1 and 15. Those are all factors. Now, a prime factor is just a factor that's also prime. So, like, if I did the factors of tw uh, 52, one of the factors is 2, and another one is 26. Doesn't mean that's all of the factors, but those are some. 2 is prime, 26 is not. So I can actually keep breaking down 26 into prime factors. Every number, every, sorry, every integer can be broken into its prime factors. Uh, except for... Like prime numbers, which is just one and itself. But, you know, it, if it's prime already, then you don't need any prime factors. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Two is a prime factor because it's prime and it's also a factor. Just very clear definition, very clear term. Every integer can be broken. Oh, I already said that. Uh, what are the prime factors of 60? So that's that's what I'm solving next here. What are the prime factors of 60? The first thing I want to do is break down 60 into its factors. So I do a factor tree. 2 times 30, 2 is prime, 30 is not, so I can keep breaking it down. 3 is prime, 10 is not, 2 and 5, now they're both prime. All of these are prime, I cannot break them down anymore. So it's saying, what are the prime factors? Uh, 2, 3, and 5. And then I don't say 2, 2, 3, and 5, because it's saying what are, it's asking for what they are, not how many are there of each. So if it said... If the question said, what are what is the sum of the prime factors? Well, the prime factors are 2, 3, and 5. And it was asking if it was asking for the sum, I would 
uh, get 10. I wouldn't get 12 because it's not asking for the sum of all of the prime factors. It's asking for the sum of the prime factors. Um, so it's a little bit of a language thing there to 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 get that kind of answer. But what are the fact? What are the prime factors? There are two, three, and five. So that's the answer to this specific question. I think on the homework it has a different question. But uh, the next thing I want to do is review the exponent rules. Uh, hopefully you remember this. If you're multiplying and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. And remember, you can go from this to this or from this to that. Uh, if you're dividing with the same base, then you subtract the exponents, and you can go both ways, back and forth. If you have a base to an exponent raised to another power, then you multiply the two. It's kind of like you distribute. Uh, if there's more than one thing in here, the n would go to both of those things, or all three, or however many you have. Uh, anything to the zero power is one. This is important. That's like one of the special cases. Um, and logarithm rules. There's a there's plenty of them. There's some special ones, but hopefully I can finish this in like 50 seconds. So, logarithm rules. This is log form. If you use magic seven, you can get exponential form. B to the y equals x. Uh, you could flip this around too. So it's like B to the y equals x. So x would be on the left side, but same same thing. If you multiply inside a log, you can change it to addition on the outside. Divide inside a log, you can get subtraction on the outside. Uh, you have a here, m to the. if you have an exponent on the inside of the log, you can move it out as a coefficient. Uh, that's not the same as if you had uh, the r on the outside there. That means something different, so careful with that. Uh, that means, so like if I had this squared, that means I'd have to write all of this two times and multiply them together. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm actually having log base b of m, like here. If that was 2, then the m would be times m. And so you could actually use this one, which would come out to doing that. You should maybe try that. It should come out to be the same thing. Those rules kind of play into each other. Um, if you have the same base, uh, of the log and you're inputting it then those kind of like cancel out and you just get the exponent uh, that works if you have like uh, uh, or if you try to change this to exponential form using magic 7 b to the r equals b to the r so uh, that's the only way that that can equal is if this was r so you can think of it as like oh the log and the b cancel out and same in the reverse if you have a base to the log with the same base, then you can think of those as canceling out and giving you just the inside there. Those are some little shortcuts. Uh, B, if you plug in the same base, that that's actually the same as this, because it's like B to the 1, right? B to the 1, so then you just get 1. Um, and then if you plug in 1, you get 0. So, like, B to the 0 equals 1. Remember, anything to the 0 is 1. So that's those are some important things to remember. And I'm taking a little bit long, um, but there you go. That's uh, that's uh, that's it. That's I'm gonna stop.